I've built quite a few omnidirectional robots using various types of omnidirectional wheels. Normal Omni wheels are a large wheel with smaller wheels around its circumference allowing it to be driven in one axis and slide passively in the other. Using three Omni wheels allows a vehicle to move in any direction, although I've also built machines with one Omni wheel. Most of my Omni wheel vehicles worked okay on flat ground, but they weren't great at climbing over obstacles. So in this video I'm going to try and build an omnidirectional walking machine which should be better at stepping over things. I want to use quite a simple mechanism for the legs though to test out the concept. I previously built a balancing strand beast which uses one motor per set of legs and a series of cams and levers to move the legs in a walking motion, but I found an even simpler mechanism in the DIY Walkers YouTube channel called Strider. This uses one central cam and two levers to move two opposing legs. There are quite a few different builds like this in the channel that you should check out. I put together a high level design in CAD pretty much through trial and error to get the lever and cam lengths the best I could for maximum leg lift and stride. I've built quite a few bigger machines over the last couple of months and eventually I'd like to build one of these big enough to ride on, but for now I've designed it to be totally 3D printed so I can check the concept works first. Most of the parts for this build can be 3D printed apart from some nuts and bolts and screws and some aluminium extrusion that we'll see later in the video. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And as usual I will be publishing the CAD and code for this project so you can have a look at the intricacies of the design or build one yourself. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. We've got two sides to the build for the main chassis and each of those has a bearing inserted. Those are screwed together and there's a spacer which holds them apart as well as some other spacers we'll put in in a moment. There's a barrel part that fits between those two bearings and that's got a recess in each end so that we can attach the cam. And these are the main cams that are going to drive the legs and keep them in sync. Those are a pretty tight fit but they're also screwed on with two small screws on each side. And those are fitted 180 degrees apart from each other so they oppose each other and we get the right walking motion. We fitted the other two spacers now and there's some 6mm studding that fits through there with a washer on each side and that's going to be the main pivot point for the levers that push the legs. And one of those fits on each side. So now we've got this mechanism with the cam in the middle and two opposing levers pointing in each direction. On the end of those levers are two more pivot points which is basically studding screwed into those holes and it's pretty tight and I've done that on the cam as well so now the legs can move freely and that means we get this quite satisfying walking motion on one side of the robot at least and that looks pretty good. So now we just need to fit the opposing legs on the other side which are 180 degrees out of sync and now if I turn that cam mechanism we see we get the walking motion just like the original build from the DIY Walkers channel. So I'm pretty happy with that. So it's time to fit a motor to drive that. I've used these motors in quite a few builds before. Originally from Gimson Robotics, this is a right angle worm gear driven gearbox. It's got an encoder, which I'm not going to use. So I've just wired the power into it and coiled up the rest of the encoder wires there. That fits into a bracket and there's a cam which fits on there, which has a captive M6 nut and a little grub screw that fits onto the flat of the motor shaft. So with that fitted our cam moves around quite satisfactorily and there's quite a lot of power in this motor. So that fits onto the extra long bit of studding I've left and that's going to control the whole walking mechanism. We need a lid on there so that we can attach the motor and that we can space everything apart correctly and I've put extra ridges along the top there so it's super rigid and it won't flex too much with the load of the motor pushing those cams. It's quite difficult to drive that central drive shaft in any other way because those levers overlap the center of the main cam shaft and that means we'd have to use a belt drive or something to take the motor off center and that's why I've used one cam on the motor to drive one of the cams we already have on the central cam shaft. But much like the other omnidirectional vehicles we're going to need three of these to move in any direction so I've attached three of these in a star shape to a central bracket with some aluminium extrusion. So now we've got three of them all 120 degrees apart. And each leg has a little wheel fitted so that it can walk actively in one direction and slide passively in the other direction. This layout was a bit of a mistake though because my active axis is driven into the center of the machine and my passive axis is driven around in a circle. And with the legs oriented in this direction we'll never be able to turn on the spot because there's no way to actually actively drive around in a circle. 
So as with the other Omni wheel builds, I then built the correct chassis for this, which is a big triangle, and that allows all of the legs to fit the other way round. So now they can walk and we can turn in a circle, and then they slide sideways so that we can walk in other axes based on the velocity of those legs. So that's looking much better and it's got a much better chance of working. But before we carry on with that and put some electronics in to see if it actually works, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for business, created by the founders of SolidWorks because they saw that modern product developers still experience many challenges related to their CAD and PDM systems. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems and works like Google Docs, so an Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. Onshape is great for working with teams using hybrid or remote working. You can collaborate with team members at the same time on the same document across the world. Data management is built into Onshape. There's no need for file management on your local hard drive. Onshape uses a GitHub inspired version and branch and merge model for fearless design experimentation. Onshape has industry leading manufacturing specific features for sheet metal and frame based design as well as surfacing, configurations and detailed drawings. And Onshape is always improving. New releases are pushed to the product every three weeks to add new features and functionality. So I'd highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching this to consider using Onshape for their business. And you can try it for free at onshape.pro slash James Bruton. Right, let's put some electronics in and see if we can get this up and running. I fitted a platform for the electronics which consists of an Arduino Mega with its radio chip on and three BTS 7960 motor drivers so we can control each of those three motors. And I'm going to be using the OpenDog 3 remote as usual so that I can control this and that's got another Arduino in with the other radio chip. The motors are 24 volts so I'm using a 6S LiPo to power everything. Our drive mechanisms are 120 degrees apart, so as with any of our other Omni wheel builds, to drive forward we just drive two mechanisms and the other one passively slides, and to rotate on the spot we drive them all in the same direction. However, to drive sideways we need to do a trig function, which is basically the cosine of 60 degrees, and that's 60 degrees from the vertical. And that is 0.5, which means this line is twice as long as the vertical line. And that actually means we have to run the drive mechanism at the top 50% faster, which seems a bit weird, but basically the other two are at an angle, so we need to untwist the whole mechanism to stop it rotating as it drives sideways. I was pretty sure this was going to work in exactly the same way, so I just basically used the code from the Omni wheel tank. So now we can see if we move all the legs in the same direction, we can rotate on the spot, and that seems to be working perfectly well. If we want to walk forwards or backwards, we can just use two sets of legs and the other one slides passively sideways on its wheels. But if we want to walk sideways, we use all three sets of legs, with the one that's directly facing sideways running 50% faster than the other two. All we're really doing here is taking the stick positions and adding numbers together to get the velocities for each drive mechanism, taking into account that one of those motors needs to go 50% faster, and that's about it. As a result of that, all of those mix together because we're just adding and subtracting numbers to get the final result. So now we can move in almost an infinite number of directions, as well as rotate and do all of those things at the same time. It looks very weird though with all of those feet walking around, all 12 of them, and you can see it looks a bit like they're moonwalking, but what's actually happening is some of them are sliding slightly sideways due to that 120 degree vector. So even though it looks like they're slipping, they're actually not, it's just they're getting pushed sideways by one of the other sets of legs, and the wheels are allowing it to slide sideways. So it actually has pretty good traction with the ground, and it can move in any direction. I think this would be super good to make into something absolutely massive that's big enough that I can ride on. We just need some more powerful motors, probably some brushless motors with some belt reductions like we've done in some of the builds in the last couple of months. You can see it's actually taking quite big strides, and it's picking its feet up a fair amount, so it'll probably deal with multi-terrain quite well. The limiting factor normally with Omni wheels is the little wheels all around the outside, but in this case these wheels could be much bigger and it would still work perfectly well, and that'll give us much more ground clearance when we want to slide those wheels sideways. I think you could probably add suspension to each of those legs as well so it wouldn't be such a bumpy ride, although the geometry should probably be adjusted so that the legs actually slide along the ground smoothly 
and they don't go bump 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 as the distance changes as the feet pick up and down. Alternatively we could add another set of legs or two legs to each of the drive mechanisms. But for now we can do some multi-terrain testing. The tank failed to walk over this plywood but how will the omnidirectional walker do? Well it can pick its feet up quite a bit and although those wheels are just smooth plastic and they don't have any rubber tyres on, it seems to cope with it much better than the tank did. Let's just turn round and go back the other way. So obviously with the wheels sliding sideways it's not too good to get over there but if I twist and turn so all of the legs move and they all take steps then I can step over that quite well. Let's try some other random bits of wood, so let's have a go on that, I'm just going to be walking along here, we can see one set of legs is not moving because it's just sliding passively, but if I go back and we'll twist and turn now and try and walk over all of them, let's just rearrange the bits of wood, and now let's try that sideways so all of the legs are moving and that does a much better job of it of course because they're actually taking steps rather than the wheels sliding passively and trying to get over the bits of wood. So now the wood doesn't get caught up in the legs. So we'll just do some more testing here, walking sideways here, so all of the legs are moving and also twisting and turning, which definitely makes all the legs move so that they can step over awkward things as we go. So that seems to be working pretty well. It's much better than the tank or the ball-wheeled vehicle. I'm really happy that worked out. I didn't really know if it was going to work properly. I thought it probably would, but that's why we build small prototypes before we build one that's big enough for me to ride on. And if you want to see that, put something in the comments and then I'll probably prioritise it over other projects. As I said earlier in the video, I publish all the CAD and code for my projects and those are on GitHub and the link is in the descriptions of this video. So if you want to have a look at how it works or make one yourself, then all of that stuff is open source and it's free to download. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below as well and patrons and youtube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion all right that's all for now